Welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube, Pitstain Hobbies. And we're back on the Enterprise D. Uh, we have uh, we have issue nine here, or pack nine, whatever you want to say. Well, with Agora, it's packs, and with Fan Home, it's issues. So we have issue nine here. All new parts now, you see. And from now on, it'll be all new parts. All new out of the baggies. No, no more of this recycling the previous guy's build. Um, either way, links uh, to Fan Home down below. Check that out. Click on that link. You can get your own Enterprise D. You know, sooner or later, these things are not going to be orderable anymore. The R2-D2, the Iron Man, and something else. I think maybe the must... Uh, something. Uh, those Fan Home builds are, gonna, are not going to be orderable in the very near future. Possibly forever or for an amount of time. So if you have the FOMO, just order it. Just start, because if you start, they'll complete your subscription. But once they cut it off, you're cut off. I'm sorry. That being said, um, so, you know, click the links below. Email me below. Uh, all my tools and stuff, I got new tape. I got half-inch electrical tape. Instead of having to slice it up on the uh, workbench, I got 3 8 inch book repair clear tape to hold down the clear windows. And I have some 3 8 inch electrical tape that's on the way from Amazon as well. A little delayed. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. So I got an Amazon link down there where I just kind of made this little, these two shopping lists. I might refine it, but I've got like tools and equipment and I've got like supplies and stuff. Uh, but go through there. All this stuff is in there. Either way, on to the build. Uh, we're going to put you aside as usual. The instructions are great, but I use the myenterpriseD.com instructions from Todd McWilliams. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just nice. It, it does very good pictorials and, and arrows and highlights and gotchas and top tips and all that good stuff. So most of the tips I give you are going to be Todd's tips from his website. So check out myenterpriseD.com down in the links below also. On to 31. I'll be right back with you, and let's get this unbagged. All righty. All our parts are out. We got our saucer back on the workbench, and we're going to take the little window section from stage 31 and we're just going to drop it onto its little drop it onto its little pegs like so and get her in there um that's our little windows in i added a tiny bit of tamiya uh xf1 flat black on the back of those black windows uh just just for insurance that's all uh you don't have to do that optional but that's that's what I added, some XF1. Now we gotta get our big mamma jamma circuit board out here. And we're gonna take this little this little jumper cable that comes in 31 and we're gonna plug her in to in one. Well, that's not a very positive click. Lordy. That's a little more positive. Okay. So that's that's what we need right there. Then we got to pull our wires out of the way here. Okay, get these all off to the side. There's four bosses here. One, two, three, four. We got to lay our circuit board down on those. And it should sit flush without any real resistance. And I'm getting a little resistance from these wires here. So what I think I'm going to do... Um, is like lay these down a little over here so they're a little flatter. I'm going to push these, this one back, and I'm going to push this one forward. So we have as little wire going over that rib right there as possible. <clears throat> so like just wire, no heat shrink. And see, now, now she lays down without any tension needed to push it down. We're going to need our four FM screws. Oh, do you hear those lovely spooging noises? Needs a little more. A little more fluff in here. He's not ready for prime time yet. A little, a little stage fright there. Got our four uh, sorry, FM screws here. <coughs> Open those up. And we're going to get out four of those. We're going to put them in the four corners of the circuit board, and we'll be right back. Don't forget your 3-in-1 oil. Alrighty. Well, it's screwed down. Just just snug. You don't need to crank down. <clears throat> now, we've taken these two, uh, the, the green 
yellow, black, red wires because they're pretty short. And we've plugged them in like so, right about there. That's where Todd plugged his in on his website. So that's where I'll plug mine in. Seems like that's fine. And then we've got to just start routing all these wires and plugging them all in. And we want to try to work from the center out, I guess. Uh, something like that. And we're going to wrap the cables. <clears throat> they gave us, uh, you know, those little, they gave us these little mini zip ties. So we'll use some of those. I hate tying cables up with zip ties. Like, honestly, I would use some, like, thin roll of Velcro strip. But once you're done with this, you're never going to need to get in there and move those wires around. Unlike a network closet at a client where zip ties are a sin. Never use them. Always use Velcro or removable zip ties or whatever. We'll be right back after we get this wire routing done. And I'll, I'll kind of show you around uh, where we did everything to make it kind of as neat and organized as possible. Because right now it is just a, an electric spaghetti basket of chaos. Um, we'll be right back. Okay, well, I've battled with the uh, electrical spaghetti gremlin uh, for a bit here. I ran out of the uh, <clears throat> kit supplied zip ties and I just had a bunch of extra four inch little plastic zip ties here. So we kind of bundled things into logical groups. Um, <clears throat> we want to keep them away from these areas here because things need to screw in to these areas. So you want to go through and around them and uh, just don't pinch anything anywhere. That's the number one thing. And just try to bundle up the excess mess as far inboard as you can um, because the, the, the hull does get pretty thin right about here. So we're not going to have a ton of clearance clearance for wires sticking up closer to the edge of the saucer. But that's that. There we go. Take a look. It's much prettier on Todd's website, I'll tell you, but I got reasonably close. Um, there we go. Now that that is out of the way. Do, 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 do. Uh... Retrieve your battery box and connect it to the socket marked out one on the saucer PCB. Okay, so we're going to go to out one, right there. Out one right there. Now I have a really long, I don't know, someone, whoever was building this before me ended up with this long lead. Uh, that they looks like they ripped off a battery box or something, or maybe they just had a really long, uh, really long. Uh, turn on our power supply here for safety's sake. Let's see, I'll keep it at two, put her at five volts. I would do four and a half, but I'm doing five. Okay, and everything. Everything appears lit. And like we could turn all the lights out in the room if we wanted to. But I can see that all of the LEDs are indeed lit up, powered on. And it's really hard to tell. I mean, <clears throat> some of these lights are going to be brighter than others and dimmer just based on their locations in relation to an LED bulb. I'm trying to... Let me turn off some of these overheads here. Okay. Hold on. Let's go full hog. Let me uh, break out the phone. Oh, my God. I was watching uh, <laughs> Steve and Katrina on the Maker's Cave. Uh, they started stage one of the alien xenomorph. I don't even care about the model. They are hilarious. That opening was, was one of the funniest ones I've ever seen in my life. So uh, let's... Turn out the shop lights. Whoo, look at her go. Very nice. Oh, a little bit of a light leak right there. A little bit of a light leak right there. And of course, it's right behind the circuit board where I said, make sure your light leaks are, are in order. You got a little light leak in the corner here, a little bit here, here. You're going to want to do this. I mean, you could see this on camera right here. This is your number one offender for light leaks is this center panel. Um, so I'm going to have to do something there to work on those, but either way, that's pretty cool. 
like I could probably work down in this basement with nothing but just the shop overheads. Uh, cover your eyes, everybody. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, not bad. Um, we did that and we tested it and we have a bunch of light leaks right here that I'm gonna have to deal with. So I'll be back in a minute. Light leak solved. Okay, so what we did, we used um, our, <laughs> you can see it better here, our Uhu Petafix Pro Power. This is a dark gray, almost black version of Blue Tack. And I roll it into tiny little spaghetti noodles, you know, a little thinner than a toothpick, and just jam it in the seam. Uh, basically, the edges of the silver reflector panels in the back are the number one source of the light leaks because they, they spray sideways as well. So if you get some all around the edges of both sides of that reflector panel, and of course in the front here, it really makes a world of difference. Um, you know, the aluminum tape is one thing, but if you don't have aluminum tape burnished down solid to the edge of those plastic light panels, then it'll actually magnify the light out of the light leaks. It, you have to basically seal up the edges of those light reflecting panels. Moving forward in the build, I have a big light leak right here still. Uh, this is a panel light leak, and there's a little around these escape uh, lifeboats as well that I'm going to have to address. What I think I might do for the rest of the build is around, bear with me, um, oh, sorry to blind everybody. So let's grab a, um, a light reflector from somewhere or an example. Here we go. Let me just grab an example here. So the edges of all of these silver light reflective panels, these edges are your enemy, it seems, for the most part. There's other sources of light leaks, but the edges of these panels, no light needs to come out of these edges for the most part. They're only supposed to really, you know, brighten up the windows that are behind those reflector panels. So I'm thinking I might go around the edges of reflector panels, especially like, see how there's, there's paint around this edge, paint around that edge. No paint right there. None. Was that by design or by omission? We don't know. You know, um, you know, the, the part works companies are not sitting in the factory in China watching over everything and building models one of the times they come off the line to test them. So it may have just been a slightly sloppy step in, in the, you know, the silver paint finishing on those reflector panels. I have so many of those extra parts. It's getting ridiculous. But I think I'm going to actually start light blocking those edges of those reflector panels with like, you know, just some, some regular XF1. I'm just going to paint around all the edges of all the reflector panels. I'll do some tests when I put new panels in to see if I get light leaks. Um, there's also going to be light coming up from below in the bottom half of the saucer. So I still have to be, you have to be cognizant of, um, you know, making sure you don't have a bunch of big, ugly gaps everywhere. Uh, but that being said, eh, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. All right, be right back. Well, we're going to quit while we're ahead on uh, stage 31. I actually sort of munched one of the panels um, back from issue 25. Uh, I was re-light blocking this, and if you can see, there was a hairline crack, and it got a little worse. And I don't know, I might replace issue 25 and put a new panel in there. I'm not sure. But here's issue 32. This happens. That seems to be a rather delicate panel. Um, because from both of the started kits I have, both of them are cracked right near the lifeboat hatches on that panel on issue 25. Um, uh, okay, well, we'll deal with that. We'll go to our network of people and uh, Facebook groups and eBay if necessary. Oh boy, this is reminding me of the DeLorean all over again. Um, <laughs> and it's my fault. Like I break something, I screw up a part. It's, it's not that I got a bad part. It's just that yeah, it didn't work out. So we got uh, 31 here and we got another nice metal hole panel. And you know, these things come pre, oh, the camera's not even picking, there it is. See that little tiny, shiny scuff on there? 
these parts come pre-scuffed sometimes because they put the screw bag on top of the part and maybe it moved around during shipping, um, the multiple shippings that this kit has gone through. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we got to load this up with windows and lifeboat hatches. And we're going to do the usual electrical tape and clear tape thing, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got our windows and lifeboats, escape pot, whatever, lifeboats, lifeboats, yeah. Uh, in there, we got the little panel screwed down. So um, the I'll tell you that that clear uh, book repair tape is definitely an improvement over the um, packing tape I was using. And now we're going to get back to this part. We've got a reflector to go on here like meh but we've got to get our next section back out and uh there's a couple of leds sticking out of it that we've got to shove in here and there and then we can uh, get this bolted onto the neck panel hopefully <clears throat> see my little windows i've got a whole bunch of windows already cut out here we've got our cp and our dm screws right there and we'll be back momentarily another day another dollar or uh, 70 of them. Uh, yeah, so I, I showed you that panel I boogered up on, uh, what was it? It was part of issue seven, stage 20 something. Again, that part was, was pre-me. If I screwed it up, I would have I would have claimed it, but it was already cracked when I got it, but I thought it would be okay. It's not, I had to buy an issue on eBay because uh, those were Eagle Moss parts. Um, back to the neck. So the wiring, as you know, you want to come out of certain holes. Now what I did is I split the wires, I just pulled them apart, and you want to take this yellow guy and you want it to actually come out of this section right here. So black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. I think that's a rap song. Oh, I'm so, I'm getting so boomery and almost, uh, not quite. I'm still Gen X. I'm Gen X, I swear. Okay, there we go. So we have those coming out down in this section here. And we have this one coming out of this, this little piggy went to, oh geez. Um, and then what we're gonna do, and then, no and then, um, we're gonna, uh, I don't wanna mess up my paint, so I'm going to snatch up a microfiber towel here, lay this down, and we've got our little, uh, our little reflector panel in here. And we want to, oh, let's see, follow Todd's instructions. Okay, so we want this light to go in here, push down. We want this light to go in here, push down. And then we got to get three CP screws in to the, the three holes there. So I will be right back, everybody. All right, and that's it for stage 32. We're just... Just leaving it like this for now. This panel is, is done. Got the little stickers on there from Mr. Mike Lane. Those are excellent. Now let's grab uh, 33. And what the hell is this thing gonna do for us? Oh, we got some more windows here. Well, let's open her up. Let's open her up. We got, we got the other window panel for the neck, but I don't think that's the reflector panel for the neck. So we'll slice and dice here. Hopefully not ourselves. Don't don't slice yourself up and on camera. And YouTube's gore filter will kick in and flag it. Okay, so we got some more windows. We got our window panel here with BP. And let's see here. So this is definitely gonna yeah, it's gonna go on right there. We got some more lights and some more lifeboats. And then that's it. And this is a, that's a funky shaped panel. Uh, this goes near the, I believe the impulse engines um, on the saucer section for when they're separated. So it can maneuver about. Don't know, don't think. Yeah, I don't think that's, we'll figure it out. Um, do, 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 33B. Does this fit on here somehow? I wonder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. 
maybe that's upside down. No, that was the right way. Eh, whatever. Okay, getting all sorts of text messages. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to load this panel up with Windows and Lifeboats, and I'll be right back. Okie dokie. We're loaded up. I'll tell you one thing. This, this uh, 3 8 inch book binding tape is so much easier to deal with than the packing tape. Um, our electrical tape, we're using just the half inch now size, and that's working out really well. I'd like to have the 3 8 inch uh, black electrical tape as well, though, for certain areas. But now that we got that loaded up, we're just going to take our little reflector panel and uh, snatch her into place right there. And uh, where, where are we taking this light from? Oh, this cable. Oh, I guess just this one. All right. And we're just going to shove this yellow light in there. Push it. Oh. And make sure you get the light in far enough for it to catch on the little hook on the panel. There we go. Okay, so that's in. And then I'm going to get three screws on here at the bottom here. One, two, three. Three of those BP screws. And uh, we'll be pretty much done, I think, <laughs> with stage 33. Be right back. Hey, welcome back to Ian's Landscape Shack. Uh, sorry about the leaf blower noise outside. Uh, those guys just come when they want, but our lights are in, they're tested, they're working. We're done with that panel and on to stage 34 and I'll be right back to let the landscapers pass. Thank you very much. All right, hopefully the uh, leaf blower noise is not too intrusive because they're not going anywhere anytime soon. It's very leafy out there. We've got a uh, stage 34 right here. We're gonna slice it open. And look at all the goodness. And there we go. Let's get this sprue of escape hatch. Lifeboats, Ian, lifeboats. <sighs> Never fails. My brain just uh, <clears throat> just plays, uh, you know, word macaroni salad sometimes. So we got this panel with a lot of window openings in it. So we're going to have to load that sucker up. We've got a couple of strings of lights. Some more lifeboats. Oh, my God. Uh, CP screws. Ah, look, we got our light reflector for this side of that side of the next section. We got some tiny little windows and some BP and some BM screws and some CP screws and two sets of clear windows. Now, if you see me going into these boxes for windows, they're sanded. Uh, these are the famous uh, Todd McWilliams sa window sanding mod. Um, so they're just basically sanded down a bit in this aluminum jig that he had CNC machined. Um, and he does share the CAD files, so you can get one of these made yourself uh, if you know a machinist in the family. Um, but yeah, you put a whole bunch of windows in that, that jig and you sand down, sand away on them. And uh, they sit a little more flush to the, uh, to the hole panels. Now, a lot of guys are getting on the bandwagon, and that's Todd's thing too, is, is to resin the windows. Resining the windows is very laborious, fairly tricky at the beginning. Like you need some spare stages maybe to practice on first. But the results are absolutely amazing when done right. I mean, they're perfectly, perfectly flush, zero gap. And uh, you don't have to tape the back of the black windows. You just paint the back of the black windows a little bit of like your uh, Tamiya XF1. Beautiful results. I'm going for like better than stock results, I guess. You know, I'm, uh, so he was kind enough to actually give me all his sanded windows that he took out of his model remodel enterprise, which is going to be a thing of beauty uh, once it's all done. He's also sharing uh, the parts list for all the electronics uh, going into that one. He's also building a totally bone stock enterprise. So he's building one bone stock and he's building the model remodel. Um, and he's sharing all the parts list for all the wiring, the 3D file for the brackets, that you could 3D print uh, to hold all the parts. Once he's done with the Arduino code, he's going to share that. It's he, he's he's a saint in the partworks community. Let me just say that. Todd, I'm not kissing you. I'm kissing your ass a little. No, <laughs> but thank you again, Todd, for the for the sanded windows. So let me uh, get some of those beautiful sanded windows and uh, lifeboats uh, popped up in here, and we'll be right back. Ah, it's quiet finally. Okay, so we got all of our little windows in there. I did. 
Sharpie on a couple of them, a little yellow and blue. It, I think it's fun. That was a good idea, Todd's. I don't think he's doing it on his uh, next one, but I like it. We're going to take our light thing and we're going to put one light in to its little home there. And then we are going to sandwich down our part and uh, get, her, get her screwed down with a couple BP screws. So just one sec. Okay, all set, put together, light which was tested now onto here. We're gonna we're gonna spin this around this way. And that what we wanna do is get the wire, the blue and red one coming out of the bottom there, and we wanna get that into its little home. And then get the one from up top and get that into its little home. There we go. And then we're going to get a few CP screws in here. And I will uh, return shortly. All right, that's all done here. Okay, so we got all those ready to go. Um, but we're not putting that on yet. We're going to rotate our neck assembly. And these two are for the neck panel on the other side. So the exact routing, as per myenterpriseD.com, is to go in through this bottom hole here, okay, right, right in here, and come out the little V in the front for one, and then go in this third opening from the front up top, and then come out of the V in the front. So I'm just gonna just gonna sneak that in there. Tweezers will be your friends here to grab, and we'll sneak that in there, and then. This one, we'll sneak this one right here. There we go. And now we're going to plug them in. There's three plugs left. We want the, the, the two closest to the, to this side, <laughs> to the left side, I suppose that would be. And uh, we want to leave that last one open for something to plug into. Now this is a little, it's a little tricky to get it in there, but there we go. She's in. And then this one, go in right next to it. And that's in. And we're going to do a quick lighting test with our power supply. Set it volts. Four and a half to five is fine. Um, the board is self-resistored, so I just run everything at five. And good. All these turn on. All those, all our other stuff turned on. Okay, photon burritos lit up. Um, good. Great. That turns off quick. How much amperage is this thing sucking? Let's see. Quarter amp so far. And there might be one more light to add to this next section. Quarter freaking amp. Okay. Yeah. That thing will eat AA batteries quickly. Uh, AAA, whatever the hell size it was, that'll eat the batteries quickly. Um, we're going to come up with a solution for that. I'll be back shortly. Alrighty, so good advice here from, uh, from that website I keep mentioning is to take this off temporarily. And then we got to make sure our wires, these two, see how I have them splayed out just a little bit right there? That's, that's what he did. Um, we're going to kind of feed all the wiring into this basket, <laughs> this basket case <laughs> inside the neck. Do our best to get that all fed in there. Okay, come on. Get it all tucked into place. Easier said than done, but doable you can even pull it up like that and then we've got a we've got to get this tab behind there and in there and locked in okay all right that looks pretty good i wonder if we're gonna have any light leaks and eh, maybe maybe not okay and once that's in place uh yeah this make sure this really this gets under there's a little tab make sure that goes underneath um, which it, which it is. 
Uh, do, 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 Let me put some neck. Yeah, just make sure everything is... Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there was that post right there. You want to pop her down, make sure it's clicked into place. Oh, now it stays by itself without any finger pressure. Okay. And then we're going to get uh, three BM screws in there. We'll be back in a sec. Alrighty, well, we're, we're all done with 34, um, and here we go. So I extended my power wires, if you can see this long thing. Uh, this is a little, uh, this is just a little JST connector. You get a whole bag of these things on Amazon pretty easily. If I forget to put it in the comments, remind me in the comments, and I'll put a link to the JST connectors um, that fit this, uh, you know, two so you know, this two-wire socket. I will, I'll put a link there, just... If I don't, if I don't remember, I'm sorry, remind me. It's it's okay. Uh, secondly, it allows us to centrally power it. So I have a couple, maybe like I don't know, ten inches of wire coming out of here, that I'll put down into the secondary hull, I guess somehow. Um, and there we go. And now, if you see, <laughs> that light is no blinky, and the red one is also no blinky. I deblinkified the lights. Plus, my photon burrito launcher is orange instead of red. Um, which I was told to do by Todd Todd from my partworks. He said, orange. I was like, okay, sure. Aren't you glad to see me? Problem. This is the circuit with the red and the green. I mean, I have these colored with marker and, you know, whatnot. But photon burrito and then the red and green and blinkies, this is the circuit board that makes them blink. So you think, simple enough, we cut out the circuit board wire and back together. Uh-uh. That jack for this specific thing that this has to go into puts out full input voltage. So if you're running at four and a half on batteries or five volts on a USB adapter, you are going to instantly fry the red LED. And then upon further investigation, there is a resistor on the positive leg of this red LED. So I replaced it with an orange LED with a similar resistor. And then when I cut out this circuit, I then also replaced um, these were white LEDs that I colored with marker. I replaced them with actual colored LEDs, red and green, two by three by four millimeter LEDs. Um, and I had to resistor both of them. So I added the resistor to each one, the appropriate size resistor. Um, and that's how we were able to rebuild this harness with a green and a red um, light and an orange photon burrito launcher. And that's how we did that. Um, I'll, I have notes somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll email me <laughs> something. I don't know if you, if you really want to do it, just, just ask, ask me for some help on that one. I did this on a live stream, so I don't have it to show to anybody, but you know, I had a spare. So it's like, if I completely borked the first one, it would be fine. Uh, so we still have a bunch of panels here that aren't bolted on this one. We didn't even put windows in it yet or anything. It's just sitting there like that. Uh, I'm leaving this panel off for now because we still got to put on the other sides of the neck. And what, what's the point? You know, I have plenty of organizational trays to put this thing in to keep it from getting out of hand. But, uh, yeah, ah, it's coming together nice. And the panel, the panel fitment is pretty, pretty darn decent over here on this part of the ship. Light leaks are really not bad or even any for the most part. Uh, a little extra black paint on the back of those panels definitely helps. Uh, but yeah, so all cool. Uh, everybody, uh, er, bleh, anyway, everyone, click the link to Fan Home down below uh, for the US or UK uh, to check out the Enterprise. Won't be around forever. Uh, we're finding that out now at Partworks. They're not just going to continue producing them all forever. They do get discontinued after a while. Um, so yeah, maybe sign up for that. Uh, check out my Amazon store link if you want to buy any of the goodies I use on my workbench. You know, I, I think I use pretty decent tools. So it's all there um, for you to peruse. Like, subscribe, comment, the standard BS, okay? Boilerplate, got to do it. YouTuber, YouTuber law, basically. But thanks for watching. Uh, we'll beam you up next time. Adios, everybody.